timing. What do I mean by time? Normal SDF, that is the static data flow, and in fact the Khan process network on top of which it is built, they focus only on the functionality of nodes in a graph. And the most important thing that they are trying to model and capture are dependencies. Right? What are the dependencies between different functional nodes? But in practice, execution of every process, that is to say, you know, even if it's something as simple as an adder, or if it's something like I said, right, you know, a color space conversion, which takes in an image and gives out an image, either way, it's going to take some amount of time. Now, the amount of time that is taken for a given node or an actor in a graph to execute is a function of the type of hardware that you have and the technology that is used. Right? So we'll make certain assumptions. One of them is that, you know, as we have seen before, just into, uh, just like we do for the firing of uh, nodes, but now with time being brought into the picture, we are going to assume that a node can start execution only after all its input dependencies are satisfied. Right? And the second thing that we are going to assume is that a node has a delay associated with it. And after that amount of delay, the outputs of that node can be considered to be stable and ready. Okay. So the simplest way as an example, what I can do is, if I have just a single node, A, and let's say that, you know, I don't even care where its output is going, right? All that I'm saying is it has some delay, TA associated with it. Okay. So effectively what I'm saying is multiple sort of iterations or executions of this or firing sequences, they'll correspond to something like A0, A1, A2 and so on. And there are different ways of looking at this. One of them would be to say that the first execution of A takes A0, that is A0 takes TA amount of time. Then the next execution takes a amount of time again, the next execution takes TA amount of time, etc. This is when you have everything happening sequentially one after the other, right? But if I only look at A, the way that I have drawn it, there are no input dependencies, right? So there is not, no particular reason why A1 should start only after A0. I could equally well have had A0 over here, A1 over here, to over here and so on. Right? These are not mutually dependent. Right? And this is something to keep in mind, right? The fact that the graph by itself only captures dependencies. What would be required if I wanted to run A0, A1, A2 in parallel? I would read appropriate kind of hardware, something which is actually capable of running A0, A1 and A2, that is three instances of the functionality of A in parallel at the same time. If I had that and given the fact that A has no input dependencies, nothing prevents me from going ahead with this implementation. So one of the things that we'll be seeing a lot of as we move forward is this concept of something called a Gantt chart. Okay. Now, you are very likely to have already come across this concept of a Gantt chart somewhere earlier, right? And the, the idea of the Gantt chart is basically that it is used in order to describe the scheduling of different operations, usually in something like project management. Okay, So every task or every job that needs to be done in order to complete a project is usually indicated as a rectangle that occupies a certain amount of horizontal space, which I mean, basically because we use the horizontal axis to represent time. Okay. So this is what I've drawn over here, right? This is an example of a Gantt chart. And all that it's saying is for this particular firing sequence, A followed by B, this is a Gantt chart that basically captures how the two events can happen one after the other. Right? And like I said, what happens is this, a takes a certain amount T A, B takes a certain amount T B, right? And this total interval over here, right, the amount of time is sometimes called the make span 
of the schedule right in other words what i'm saying is that this sequence that i've drawn over here a followed by b is a form of schedule effectively it is telling you the sequence in which the different jobs or different tasks need to operate and the make span is the total amount of time required in order to complete an entire set okay now ab is not the only valid firing sequence right remember what we talked about valid firing sequences as long as all dependencies are satisfied i can basically go through and come up with any other firing sequence so in particular something like a a b b right what this will result in is on the edge between a and b after one firing of a i'll end up with one token here after one firing of b i'll end up with two tokens after b fires one has gone away and after the second firing of b once again i'm back to square one no tokens left on a b so a a b b is a valid sequence a a b b b is not valid because for the third b to fire there are no tokens present on the a b h and what i'm saying over here is with this chart on the bottom left right uh, i could have both the a's a0 and a1 firing in parallel with each other right one after the other no not sorry not one after the other but in parallel with each other and the b's right b0 b1 could then again uh, trigger uh, as soon as the corresponding a values are done <clears throat> in other words b0 depends only on a0 and b1 depends only on a1 this could be expanded right i could go up to n consecutive values of a and then n consecutive values of b and they could all finish within the same amount of time or i could have some other kind of a gantt chart as well something which would be more complicated something which would basically say a0 over here then b0 then a1 b1 etc right this is also a valid diagram corresponding to the different operations which would basically correspond probably to a sequence like a b a b and so on okay so in other words different firing sequences can lead to different amounts of time taken for execution of the operations and can lead to different looking gantt charts at least uh, there's no easy way of depicting the fact that a0 and a1 over here need not be sequential i am saying a0 and a1 to indicate that these are two successive executions of the function a right one way of looking at it is to say that let's say let's say that the function that i'm doing is basically taking each and every input sample from an a to d converter and multiplying it by a certain value right just a gain term, so to say okay now what that means is whether i execute the first operation first and then the second operation and then the third operation or i do them all in parallel depending on whether i have my data already present or not right it does not make any difference to the final result but as far as my sequencing is concerned i can still write a0 a1 because i know that this is the sequence of data that i actually have so my input data from the adc actually follows a certain time pattern i cannot rearrange that right on the other hand i if i make the assumption that the input data has already been collected from an adc and stored into memory in an array somewhere then the program that i write in order to actually do the multiplication with a constant does not need to read them in the sequence in which they were written in there i could read them in any sequence right and that is the point basically what it's saying is there is no dependency between a0 and a1 on the other hand this self dependency this kind this is sometimes called a self loop right self dependency or a self loop over here in terms of the graph in this case now what it's saying is there is a dependency only after a0 has completed can a1 have this dependency in other words exists now previously when i just had a standing alone by itself with no incoming edges it meant that a0 a1 a2 yes they are a sequence of operations that need to happen but they need not happen one after the other they could also happen all in parallel or here on the other hand because i have the self loop it means that only after a0 can i do a1 right 
So A1, in other words, depends on A0 being completed. That in turn means that my Gantt chart will end up looking something like this, right? As soon as A0 is completed, A1 and B0 both are now ready to start. And as soon as A1 is done, B1 and A2 are ready to start. And so on. 